Good evening everyone. We'll talk today about an important topic. This was the headlines of New York Times at uh, 21 of July 1969. Men walk on moon. Actually 11 years before we step on the moon. Uh, New York Times headlines at 26 of November 1958. Uh, where electrode in heart saves man's life. Here is uh, this picture documents the first in human transvenous uh, temporary pacemaker. Here is uh, uh, Dr. Furman. Here is a patient, Mr. Uh, Shapiro. And here is a pacemaker, uh, Peter. But we have actually two problems in uh, this picture. First of all, Dr. Furman is lighting the cigar of Mr. Uh, Shapiro, the patient. And this actually the size of the temporary pacemaker. This problem partially solved one year later by inventing a smaller portable version of pacemaker. So back to our topic, what is the indication of temporary? According to the ECC guidelines for cardiac pacing 2029, uh, plus one indication for temporary venous pacing is recommended in cases of hemodynamically compromising bradyarrhythmia, refractory to intravenous chronotropic drugs. Can be used also transient uh, in case of reversible uh, uh, bradyarrhythmia, like in case of myocardial infarction, and also as a bridge for permanent uh, pacemaker when the setting for uh, permanent uh, pacemaker insertion is not available at uh, the moment. And we have plus two indication for temporary uh, using of transcutaneous uh, pacing where uh, the patient uh, in hemodynamically uh, compromised uh, caused by preterismia and the transvenous system is not available. We also have other indications for cardiac pacing. It might be a part of procedure like rapid pacing during TAV or TVAR, coactation, stenting or RCA rotaplation. Might use also for termination of certain arrhythmias like overdrive pacing in case of atrial flutter or slow. So how to insert a temporary maker? Our toolkit will include in, uh, in addition to the sterile trap and septic, local anesthesia, sutures and dressing, the venous axis and leap positioning and most importantly pacemaker setup. Here we start by uh, getting a formal consent from the patient, checking the coagulation profile, in patient position and subine uh, position, and uh, connected to monitor, sterilization and local anesthesia, and business as usual uh, while getting venous access, uh, usually six French sheets, uh, via right internal jugular vein, like uh, we uh, insert uh, CV line, or a list preferred uh, via femoral approach. This actually might be uh, appropriate access in cases of uh, uh, primary BCI uh, with heart block or something like that. And the rule is ultra, ultrasound guided is uh, safest way to go. Next step will be introduction of the pacing uh, lead. We have uh, uh, multiple options for uh, guidance. Better uh, way is fluoroscopic guidance. Here in uh, the left uh, view, 40 degree, this view is important to differentiate between uh, the septum, and directed this way, and the RV free wall this way. The appropriate site is the septum. So uh, we are uh, aiming to get this direction of the uh, basin grid. We are avoiding the RV free wall because uh, uh, this wall is very thin and liable for uh, complication like uh, lead uh, perforation, especially in patients with uh, uh, RV infarction or uh, frail patient uh, old age uh, with thin walled uh, RV. And then we get the RAO 40 degree view uh, which differentiate the accurate position of the lead uh, in the apical septum or mid RV or at the RV. So this view, the left uh, 40 degree, is the most important view. 
then we have a window for echocardiographic uh, guidance in case uh, we are in hurry and can't transfer the patient into the cat lab we uh, can get this subcostal view by uh, getting the probe node uh, directed towards this uh, third clock uh, or laterally and here is uh, the view showing right atrium tricuspid valve and right ventricle and here is the pacemaker lead traversing the uh, tricuspid annulus towards this the uh, RV septum similar picture can be get through apical portion review also other way of uh, guidance is uh, utilizing intracardiac ECG by connecting the end of uh, uh, the elect uh, the, the pacing lead uh, to uh, ECG electrode and uh, here is the ECG pattern when the uh, lead is floating in the RV wall and when we get this uh, injury pattern or uh, a segment elevation in the repolarization phase, this uh, denotes that we are in contact with the RV wall. And finally, the pacemaker setup. Uh, you might have this uh, uh, pacemaker uh, uh, in your hostel or uh, another uh, uh, type. So uh, we are dealing with the uh, uh, items rather than uh, this shape of uh, pacemaker. First setup of heart rate usually set above the patient native heart rate, usually around 70 or 80. Higher rate might be allowed in cases uh, heart rate is important for cardiac output as uh, in situations like uh, shock or heart failure. Then we have the output of the pacemaker, which is the electricity uh, getting out the pacemaker to induce depolarization of the uh, patient uh, myocardium. Uh, we get uh, uh, this uh, parameter at the highest number, which is 12 here, and then uh, get down uh, step by step as we uh, see here uh, at four. Uh, milliampere, 3 milliampere, 2 milliampere, and 1 milliampere, and here is we uh, lost capture. What is meant by lost capture? We have the spike of uh, the ECG output not followed by QRS complex. So the ventricle is not hearing the pacemaker. So uh, at this point, we set the pacemaker double the uh, uh, threshold at which we lost capture. And in this example, we lost at 1 milliampere, so we will set it at uh, two to three milliampere. Third item to set is sensitivity. Sensitivity in simple word is uh, uh, what pacemaker, uh, what is the threshold at which the pacemaker hear or uh, see uh, the patient native uh, heart rhythm. Uh, how to uh, set this uh, item? We can appreciate here that if we set a sensitivity at low, uh, very low number, this might uh, sense uh, something like the T wave and uh, uh, getting inhibited. And on the other hand, if we set uh, the sensitivity very high above the uh, QRS complex voltage, uh, the pacemaker might not uh, feel uh, the patient native heart rhythm and continuously fire in uh, asynchronous way. So uh, how to set up sensitivity? we increase uh, the threshold of uh, sensitivity using this button till we uh, get this uh, pattern of laws of sensing here's a pacemaker not sensing the patient heart rhythm and uh, we see inappropriate site of spikes like uh, here spike is uh, on the t wave then we uh, get lower and lower till uh, we resume the normal sensing uh, pattern of the pacemaker and set it below it. Last uh, setup is uh, this button. Usually we keep this button towards the demand. What is meant by demand? This means uh, that the pacemaker is sensing the patient on risk and fire only when, uh, when it doesn't sense uh, any output from the patient and uh, the heart rate went below uh, the setted here. On the other option, asynchronous, this means the pacemaker will fire regardless the uh, native rhythm of the patient. So what is pacemaker language, what is VOO, what is V? The first letter refers to uh, which chamber is paced. 
second letter is uh, referred to uh, which chamber is sensed by the pacemaker and position 3 or letter 3 is what is the response of pacemaker when sensing uh, this chamber so for example VVI this mean ventricle spaced after uh, sensing also the ventricle and getting no uh, feedback from uh, the ventricle demand mean uh, this occur when the heart rate uh, uh, go down below the setup uh, rate and this is the usual mode of temporary pacemaker the demand mode VO means that the ventricle is spaced regardless the output of the patient there is no sensation at all and this is risky as we will show so here in here is an example of VVI uh, mode here is uh, the pacemaker sensing the patient uh, ventricle and when uh, receiving no feedback from the patient start firing or stimulating the ventricle there is a spike for a by QRS complex and then when sensing a native heart rhythm of the patient it is stop of firing and here is the native rhythm of the patient so this is VVI mode which mean as we uh, said before ventricle is spaced after uh, uh, receiving no feedback or no sensing from the ventricle and the heart rate go down the setup rate and this demand demand is the preferred mode other mode as we said also VOO which uh, is mean another mode asynchronous the ventricle is spaced regardless uh, the patient uh, output and this actually risky because the firing of the pacemaker might coincide with uh, the repolarization of the patient or the T wave this might induce ventricular fibrillation as we see here so rapid trouble shooting of the timber pacemaker uh, here we only notice spikes without QRS complex this means in another word the pacemaker is uh, or the ventricle sorry the ventricle is not hearing the patient in another word the laws of capture so uh, what to do in this uh, uh, pattern first increase the cardiac output or raise the pacemaker voice uh, so that the ventricle uh, become hearing it again and there is the normal capture spike followed by QRS then uh, check for the cause of laws of capture this might be caused by uh, lead migration from its position so check lead position second might be related to uh, battery uh, uh, become uh, end so uh, always keep spare batteries available especially if the patient is dependent on the pacemaker finally the ventricle itself might have metabolic problems so that it, it need uh, more electricity to become stimulated this happened actually in metabolic acidosis or where certain uh, drugs the other problem is laws of sensing the pacemaker can't see the patient heart rhythm or can't hear the patient heart rhythm so it fire regardless uh, the patient heart rhythm and here uh, we can diagnose this when we see spikes of uh, the pacemaker in in appropriate sites like here in the uh, t-wave so what to do uh, in this situation simply uh, decrease the sensitivity, sensitivity threshold of the pacemaker so that uh, with lower uh, millivolt threshold uh, this in another word means that the pacemaker become more sensitive and uh, can uh, see the patient's own uh, heart rhythm and inhibit itself Post procedure, uh, we fix the, the sheath with sutures, cover lead with trial tracing, do uh, post procedure ECG. Uh, we are basing here the right ventricle, so uh, we are expecting left bundle. Do chest X ray post procedure to exclude any lung related complication like hemothorax or pneumothorax related uh, to jugular uh, venous axis. Consider prophylactic antibiotic preferred anti staph aureus. Consider prophylactic anticoagulation, especially in the femoral approach and the patient bed rhythm. Shorten the duration of temporary pacing as much as possible uh, to decrease the incidence of complications. 
and do echo follow up before and after removal of the read uh, searching for any regarder uh, fusion notice that uh, uh, in certain situation like an RV infarction if the lead of the pacemaker is perforating the RV free wall the actually the problem happen when you remove this lead because this lead is sealing uh, the site of perforation so in case you uh, remove uh, the lead of pacemaker and the patient underwent in hemodynamic instability or uh, arrested first thing to uh, think about is uh, the presence of uh, pericardial effusion so what is the of the procedure might be access related uh, like pneumothorax hemothorax infection or bleeding and this uh, might be lessened by uh, ultrasound guided venous puncture lead related like perforation malfunction displacement or endocarditis and this uh, prevented by uh, keeping uh, the lead for the least duration as uh, possible and using microscopic guidance or echocardi echocardiographic guidance during insertion and using a certain type of lead uh, which is a balloon tipped electrode which is more safer than the semi rigid or rigid uh, regular electrodes immobilization related like thrombotic event dbt or pulmonary embolism this as we said uh, can be prevented uh, using uh, jugular rather than femoral approach and using prophylactic anticoagulation in the patient uh, pet rhythm and by uh, lessening the duration of uh, temporary pacing as much as physical we have some situation like here uh, in scenario of patient with uh, permanent pacemaker coming with pocket infection and uh, underwent uh, uh, pacemaker uh, extraction and he, he is dependent on the pacemaker and they need uh, temporary pacing for a while uh, till the infection clear up we have option rather than the regular temporary, uh, temporary pacemaker which is externalized uh, battery uh, uh, we fix uh, uh, an screwed lead in the right ventricle which uh, keeping the lead more stable uh, then uh, it connected with a permanent uh, pacemaker uh, battery and this uh, can uh, uh, lead to uh, less complication rather than the temporary one especially related to the lead uh, migration or uh, perforation the site uh, is usually in the contralateral site of the uh, permanent pacemaker site and finally if you have my like this mm, will be your first temporary pacemaker case this case from my uh, residency uh, this patient uh, was uh, uh, 50 uh, year old uh, presenting with heart block and uh, during uh, trials of uh, getting internal uh, regular venous axis and uh, inserting temporary lead uh, uh, the lead uh, all time uh, went down to uh, the abdomen and didn't reach the heart so for the sake of time I uh, inserted uh, shifted to femoral approach and inserted temporary pacemaker by temp femoral approach then uh, I was uh, eager to know what is the cause of this uh, so I uh, perform a tip injection from the jugular venous sheath and similar to the lead the dye uh, went down to the abdomen by busting the heart with no contrast inside the heart the patient underwent a mouth slice CT and here is a reconstruction uh, 3D uh, view we are looking from the back of the patient this patient actually had bilateral absence of your vena cava uh, with both a nominant vein joining each other forming azogous vein which joins the inferior vena cava down at the abdomen and the patient have no superior vena cava at all and actually this was the third reported case of the combination of bilateral abscess superior vena cava and complete heart block or lid wide this patient uh, actually underwent uh, permanent pacemaker via epicardial uh, approach and finally, thank you.